welcome learners of our BBA program, Marketing Management course. We are having uh, the discussion on Unit 8. This is all about logistics and supply chain management. This logistics and supply chain management, this particular unit from your self learning material, uh, I shall cover this in three parts uh, of videos. Each video will have about 10 minutes of discussion and these videos will be based on the content of your self learning material as well as the learning objectives. So let us start the part one of your unit on logistics and supply chain management. Here we have taken up these three learning objectives and after going through this video you should be able to describe the concept of physical distribution, functions of physical distribution, modes of transportation, what physical distribution is all about. Physical distribution comprises a number of other activities, transportation, storage and along with this we shall also discuss about the modes of transportation. Some other concepts related with market logistics etc we shall take up in the other two videos. Let us first start with the concept of physical distribution. What physical distribution is all about? Physical distribution is the process of making the movement or product to the consumers. It basically implies the flow, flow of the physical processes. It encompasses all the activities involved in the physical flow of products from producers to consumers. Producers will produce the finished goods. Then the producers will store it in the finished goods warehouse. From the finished goods warehouse, it will come to the distributors. From the distributors, it will come to the dealers. From the dealers, it will come to the sub dealers. From the sub dealers, it will come to the wholesalers. From the wholesalers, it will come to the retailers. And from the retailers only, ultimately, the consumers will purchase the products. So that will be the end point. So this implies lots of movement and lots of transportation, lots of storage, lots of handling. So physical distribution basically talks about that particular process of making the movement of the product, the tangible product, the physical product to the consumers across the chains. So it encompasses all activities involved in the physical flow of products from producers to consumers. So you see, suppose the headquarters or say in near Mumbai or say in Thane or say in Baddi in Himachal Pradesh or say in Pantnagar in Uttarakhand, the companies are having their factories and the demands may be exist in Aizol, demands may exist in Imphal. So the products will have to be transported from Pantnagar in Uttarakhand or say Baddi in Himachal Pradesh to the points of consumption which will be located maybe say 100 kilometers away from Aizol or say 100 kilometers away from Imphal. So the products have to be transported through long distances across terrains, across bridges, making use of railways, roads, etc. And it may be required to be stored for a considerable length of time before being consumed. So physical distribution largely determines the customer service level. Inefficient physical distribution leads to loss of consumers and marketers markets those those marketers who can take up their physical distribution in the right spirit they would be in a better position in the market so functions of physical distribution in my introductory lecture i have already stated that physical distribution is very important at india and complexes a number of activities so physical distribution has to be planned because demand will have to be made and in order to meet the demand the production will have to be and that's why frederick taylor you know, you know the father of scientific management he emphasized on forecasting of demand and taking care of the production schedule so that the demand can be met so in plant warehousing means the finished goods the companies will produce the finished goods so within the plant they will have to have the finished goods inventory from that that goods will be transported to the dealers distributors across the same. 
then transportation physical distribution implies transportation transportation may be various through various modes it may be railways it may be road it may be air it may be pipeline if it is liquid or gaseous products so it through various modes the transportation will have to take place and then in the field the warehouses will have to be maintained the warehouses will have to be constructed the warehouses will have to be maintained it may not be the company owned warehouses the warehouses may be hired because the different warehouses will render the warehousing services then receiving receiving across the stages cnf agent will have to receive it distributor will have to receive it dealer will have to receive it accordingly the chain will be maintained and then it requires lots of handling say so suppose it will come from come through railway from railway wagons to the tracks from the tracks to the auto vans so it requires lots of material handling then secondary transportation suppose we are having a sub distributor in lakhimpur town and we are having a distributor in tezpur so the company will send the goods to the distributor in tezpur from the tezpur the sub distributor at lakhimpur or say at gopur right in the some places of upper assam so that is basically secondary handling and sub distribution of products so transportation could be through various modes one could be roadways the other could be railways another could be waterways and there could be airways or could be pipelines so if we go for roadways there are there said trucks are there auto vans are there tata 407s are there you know the various modes of transportation are there roadways and it's ultimately to give the last mile advantage we make use of roadways but there are certain problems with roadways we cannot carry the bulk items bulky transportation is not possible for bulky transportation the railways are used so you may have seen the petrol tankers right the entire rail is full milk is transported to railways right so coal storage even the railway wagons are coal stored so different modes or nowadays uh, multi uh, multi modalism right the containers are there railways have been kept by container corporation of india they transport the bulk items through containers of fixed sizes so roadways are used railways are used so one cannot exclusively depend on one of these if something is transported to railways from the railway stations we will have to make use of road transportations or sometimes it could be the waterways so in assam you all know about numurigaon refinery bongaigaon refinery so refineries use certain equipment certain machineries which are quite bulky and the brahmaputra river and the thonsiri river was used to for transportation so waterways that is something which is very important in today's context because we do not find much of pollution if we can but the problem is waterways is slow compared to railways compared to road network waterways basically takes time then airways for small items we can make use of airlines and then pipelines say for gaseous products for say liquid products we can make use of pipelines say for refineries if i have given the examples the crude oil is pumped the crude oil is transported hmm? the imported crude oil is transported through pipeline to the refineries located in saparasam earlier from digboy the crude oil was pumped through pipeline transported through pipeline to barauni refinery so these are the different modes of transportation which the marketers use so roadways as i have told you there are certain advantages more flexible less costly it has got wider coverages it helps in loading transportation but there are certain disadvantages it may not be suitable for long distances say from ahmedabad to guwahati if we make use of railways in that case it will be better so it cannot carry bulky goods so railways are better in that case it moves at less speed compared to airways railways as i have told you there are certain advantages it is suitable for bulky goods transportation of heavy goods we can make use of railways at the same time railways have got a fixed lines that is a problem and it is a costly for short distance for long distance it is okay for short distance railways are a costly mode of transportation and at the same time we cannot reach the remote areas to railways waterways is a cheap mode of transportation can carry bulky goods as i have given you the example refineries the equipment could have been transported is separate for glassware scientific instrument etc but it's very low speed compared to its counterparts like railways roadways etc airways 
The fastest means of transport, as you all know, it's more safe for goods to be transported, but it is costliest mode of transportation. It has got limited carrying capacity. Pipelines, as I have told you, for gas and liquid commodities like crude oil, petroleum, pipeline are used. So we shall discuss the other parts in the remaining two videos. Okay, thank you.